Hello and welcome to the video. Today we're going to be discussing neural signaling or C2.2. To start off with, let's discuss neurons. Neurons are the main cell type of the nervous system. And there are three main parts to the structure of the neuron. First, we have the dendrites, which are short nerve fibers that are involved in receiving electrical impulses. These impulses are then integrated by the soma of the neuron or the cell body that includes the cytoplasm and nucleus. This is a region involved in integration of signals. The third section is the axon, which is an elongated nerve fiber that's involved in sending these electrical impulses down the length of the neuron until it reaches its target cells. The neurons are specialized cells that function to transmit electrical signals within the nervous system. But how does a neuron actually do this and transmit these electrical signals? In order to understand this, we have to understand in order to understand the electrical signaling of the neuron, we first need to understand the concept of the membrane potential. The membrane potential is the difference in electrical charge across the membrane of a neuron. To break this down, let's look at an example here. So on the left-hand side, we can see that there are more negative ions inside the neuron and more positive ions outside of the neuron. As the membrane potential is always a charge of the inside of the membrane relative to the outside, in this case, it would be a negative membrane potential. In comparison, on the right-hand side, we can see that the inside of the membrane is relatively positive compared to the outside, and so we would have a positive membrane potential. Keep in mind that this is a charge across a membrane. And oftentimes we're discussing the membrane potential at different sections of the membrane. So if, for example, we have a segment of the axon here, at a certain region of the axon, we might have a positive membrane potential. And at another segment of the axon, we might have a negative membrane potential, or the inside of the membrane is relatively negative compared to the outside. The membrane potential of a neuron at rest, or when it's not firing a signal, is called the resting potential. And this is generally around minus 70 millivolts. The negative resting potential is maintained by our sodium potassium pumps that use ATP to actively transport three sodium ions outside of the cell and exchange these with two potassium ions into the cell. In order to remember the concentration gradient of the neuron at rest, we can use the analogy of a salty banana or a banana in the ocean, with the banana being the inside of the neuron having high potassium in comparison to the outside of the neuron where we have the salt or a high concentration of sodium on the outside. So you can think of that as a salty banana analogy. As there are relatively more positive sodium ions, three, outside the cell compared to potassium ions, two, inside the neuron, we're going to have a relatively negative membrane potential at rest. In addition, there are also negative ions, such as chloride, that are going to contribute to this negative resting potential. So our resting potential is going to be negative around, again, minus 70 millivolt. So that is a neuron at rest. What's going to happen when the neuron is actually sending a signal or a signal is being propagated? We call this the action potential. And we start off with the depolarization of the membrane. The depolarization is a change from this negative resting potential to a positive membrane potential. This occurs when we have a threshold potential that's reached. AKA, if the segment of the membrane reaches around minus 55 millivolts, so you go from minus 70 millivolts to minus 55 millivolts, this will trigger the opening of voltage-gated sodium channels. These channels are gated by voltage, so when they reach this threshold potential of minus 55, they're going to open. And we can see that here. 
We can think about the concentration gradient of sodium. As we learned before, there is more sodium outside of the neuron, remember, of the salty banana. And so sodium would now move down the concentration gradient through these channels and into the cell. So we're going to have an influx of sodium. How would this affect the membrane potential? Well, we have an influx of positive ions. Therefore, we're going to have a more positive membrane potential. And we're going to go from negative to positive, or we're going to have a depolarization. At a certain point, these sodium channels will close and potassium channels will open. As there are more potassium ions inside the cell than outside the cell, we're going to have an efflux of potassium moving outside the cell. How would this affect the membrane potential? You can think about that for a second. But basically, as potassium is also positive, the inside of the cell is losing positivity or it's becoming more negative. And we call this the repolarization or the change of a positive memory potential back to a negative resting potential due to the loss of positive potassium ions. If we plot these changes in membrane potential, where memory potential on the y-axis here, we can see that we start with negative 70 resting potential here, maintained by those sodium potassium pumps. If a threshold is reached here around minus 50 millivolts, we're going to have voltage gated sodium channels that will open. What will happen then? We'll have that influx of sodium into the cell or an influx of positive ions into the cell leading to a depolarization or the change from negative to positive membrane potential. At a certain point, we're going to have our voltage gated potassium channels open. This will lead to the facilitated diffusion of potassium channels out of the cell or the loss of positive ions. Therefore, this will lead to a repolarization or the memory potential going back to its negative state. We'll have a slight hyperpolarization or offshoot where we're going a little bit more negative than the resting potential. And the resting potential is then reestablished by our potassium sodium pumps here. This action potential that we've broken down here is occurring at one region of the axon. This diffusion of sodium will actually trigger a wave of depolarization in the next segment of the axon, as you can see here. And this nerve impulse will then be propagated all the way down the axon until we reach the axon terminal. Okay, quick quiz. When the neuron is at rest, what is a concentration gradient of sodium and potassium? Hint, we can think about that salty banana analogy. Pause the video and write down your answer. So when the neuron is at rest, we're gonna have a greater concentration of sodium outside the membrane, the salt, and we're gonna have a higher concentration of potassium inside the membrane, right? Or bananas, which are high in potassium, salty banana. And the next question is a little bit more tricky, so take some time to think about it. So after repolarization and before the resting membrane potential has been reestablished, what is the concentration gradient of sodium and potassium in this case? Pause the video and write down your answer. In this case, it's going to be flipped. So we're actually going to have a greater concentration of sodium inside the membrane this is due to the influx of sodium during depolarization. And we're going to have a higher concentration of potassium outside of the membrane due to the efflux of potassium in repolarization. So this is why it's so important to have the sodium potassium pump to reestablish this resting membrane potential and the concentration gradients of sodium and potassium. One common question type is interpreting oscilloscope traces, or these traces where we're looking at changes in the membrane potential during an action potential. Here, we have A, B, C, and D. Again, pause the video and annotate what is actually occurring at A, B, C, and D. So at A, we have our resting membrane potential, right? Our resting potential. This is actively maintained by our sodium potassium pumps. 
at B, we have a threshold potential that's been breached, and we have a opening of what? An opening of our sodium channels that are triggering a depolarization. At C, we have the opening of another channel. Which channel would this be? This would be the opening of the K plus channels. Then we have our repolarization, a slight hyperpolarization. Before D, we have the reestablishment of the resting potential. When answering E or Qs, we always want to break down the question. So first, we can think about, number one, the command term explains. We want to give a detailed account or the mechanism. And what are we going to be asked to explain? We can underline some of the key terms and concepts. So we're going to be asked to explain the events that occur during a nerve impulse and how this impulse then moves along the axon. So we know from what we just learned, we're going to have to describe the different stages of the action potential and then also how that action potential is propagated along the axon or down the length of the neuron. Tip one, for ERQs, generally a point will be given for a definition of the main concept and term. So here we're being asked to explain the nerve impulse. Therefore, we can start with the definition of a nerve impulse. So a nerve impulse, if you remember, is, is that action potential, right? where it's an action potential, which has that depolarization and repolarization. The next thing we can think about is, can we give any details or mechanisms of how the nerve impulse works or how it's propagated along the axon? So certain things come to mind, right? So we can think, where do we start? We start with our resting potential. Then we move on to our depolarization, our repolarization. Then we have the propagation of the action potential along the axon. Okay, so now we have several things that we can use to brainstorm. We can keep in mind this is a seven mark question. So we wanna to try to give at least seven or more meaningful pieces of information. One thing that we can think about is our definitions again. So what is the resting potential? So we know that the resting potential is negative. We know it's around minus 70 millivolts. And then we can also think about how or why is something the way it is. So why is the resting potential negative? Okay, we can think about our sodium potassium pump. And then we can also think about cause and effect. So we have our sodium potassium pump. What does it actually do? How does it lead to a negative resting potential? Well, we know that it actually pumps Na plus out. So there's more outside the cell. And we have K plus in. So we have more inside the cell. Okay, and then we can move on or we can brainstorm. Can you think about anything else about the resting potential? If not, we can move on to depolarization. Again, we can start off with what is depolarization? So depolarization, if you remember, is the change from a negative to a positive membrane potential. And then when we're brainstorming key points saying, okay, well, what actually leads to a depolarization? Well, we know that a threshold potential needs to be reached. And what does this lead to when we reach the threshold potential of around minus 50 millivolts? Well, we have sodium channels open. When these sodium channels open, then we could think, okay, what happens after that? Well, we have the movement diffusion of sodium where sodium diffuses into the cell. And what happens when we have sodium diffuse into the cell? Well, this the cell becomes more positive, right? Because we have the influx of positive ions. So now it's more positive inside compared to outside. And so now we've given the full mechanism for how we've gone from a negative to a positive membrane potential. Try to do this for yourself for repolarization, giving a definition, what leads to it, and then what are the actual mechanisms, right? And think about a link from cause to effect. So when something happens, what does that lead to next? You can pause the video and in a second, I'll give a couple of examples here and you can take a look and compare it to your answers. So you can take a look here and see what you've written down. And thank you so much for watching. This was C2.2.